These young dudes, they too comfortable talking to adults. This is Twitter playing out in real life. They ain't grown up in a generation where you get knocked out if you say the wrong thing to somebody's face. They ain't grow up in the 315 generation. Meet me at 315 after school. This Twitter, this TikTok, this Instagram, all these people like to talk and say whatever they got to say and then hide behind a keyboard. This is keyboard toughness playing out. He too comfortable talking to adults. He too comfortable disrespecting elders. If a camera sit there and go back and forth, that's beneath him. And that frustrated me. That is beneath you to go back and forth and okay. tell some. And I'm saying this from experience, Michael, because I wish I could have all the time back that I spent arguing with people who frankly are beneath me. And I don't mean that from a humanitarian right. or from a, from a human or God's creature standpoint. Right. I mean arguing down with people. I was mad, mad. Jeez. Yeah. Are you telling me to calm well, down? Heard it. Yeah. Michael, um, I know where this is All right, going. so here's some was, of the feedback. Here's some of the feedback in, that we got. I was creeping in the comment section on this one. I was creeping on your feed on this uh, one. Yeah. How do you lecture this kid about his behavior? Well, actually, sorry, we got another one. We got to stop acting like uh, kids weren't disrespectful back in the day. This revisionist history is getting out of hand. Yeah, we were disrespectful, and then we woke up in, in, in the following week and tried to remember what happened. Yeah we, yeah, we were definitely disrespectful, and then we paid for it. Uh, how do you lecture this kid about his behavior as if he's an anomaly or an embarrassment when adults have been slandering Cam, LeBron, Serena Cap, and other black athletes for clout, paychecks, and amusement unchecked? He did what he sees being done. And we spoke to that. We spoke to that. I mean, that's right. This is, this is the, the business we're in, I but I would that. like to think that there's a level of professionalism that we approach our job with, but we can't speak for everybody. But the kid saw what was being done, 100%, but he went too far. And we ain't at Cam, we're not trying to be Cam Newton. That's the other part of it, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's, there's also an element yeah, of true. you're trying to get where Cam has been. You're at Cam's event. We're not, you know, we're not beholden to Cam. We're, we're, we signed up to be journalists, and there is some, some ethics involved. And we grown. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, okay. So if nothing else, do as I say, not as I do. How about that? <laughs> What's next, man? What's the next? Like that. All right, yeah, those are good comments. Thank you for that. Um, on the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, head coaching situation, uh, Fizdale, this is from Philip Walker. Fizdale didn't do us any favors. Not sure the name of the assistant that got skipped over, uh, Vanderpool, and many, but uh, do you want his first opportunity to be with the Wolves, what they have on the floor right now? If D'Lo were there, I'd say bet, let's go. But honestly, it wouldn't hurt to wait for a better situation. Sometimes you just have to wait for that better situation. Look at Monty and Derek. Thing, Mike. Uh, I, I'm going to say this. Um, don't, don't, don't bring David Fisdale's name into it. Like every black coach is not representative of what's going to come next. You just want the opportunity. Give me an opportunity if I've earned it, and then if I fail on the job, so be it. But I'm failing as David Fisdale, not failing on behalf of all black coaches. And right. Tim Floyd right. was a disaster with the Chicago Bulls, but he didn't stop other white coaches from getting opportunities. So you see what I mean? So I, I don't, no, I don't no, like I, no, I, I get, I get Philip Walker's, I don't, I don't like it how he worded would, it, but I, I get what yeah. Philip Walker is saying, because he's saying like, that. since our opportunities are so, so few and far between, you wanted to get one where he could hopefully succeed. This no, one's for you, Michael, this is from D. Scott. If I were happen. a GM you and had to job. choose, yeah, if I were a GM and had to choose between Luca and Larry, I would take Luca, even at his current progression. He may lack defense and even shooting percentage, but he is far more skilled offensively and can distribute the ball equal to or better. Uh, D. Scott, respectfully, you clearly never watched Larry Bird. Uh, I, I mean, like, I love Luca, but everything you just said, like, no. <laughs> it's like, uh -uh, no, everything you just said, there's no, there's no way. There's no way. There, there, I mean, uh-uh. No, 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 sir. Luca's not a better shooter. He's not a better passer. Uh, he's not more skilled than Larry Bird. Uh, I don't, Mike, do you need to reply to that, or can we move on? He, he try, he, yeah. Move on. He's just trying to get a rise out of me. He's trying to get a rise out of me. And all right. It kind of worked. This is on all-star stubs. This is on all-star stubs. They need to increase the all-star rosters. The league is more talented than it's oh. ever been. This isn't the expansion era with redistributed players, and most teams barely had a star. The league is littered with talent. Expand the rosters. Amen. AJ, amen. Uh, no, no, nothing else needs to be said. I would love to see it expand. Put, let more people in the IP. 
the you know what, a game is great? Going. A game All is right, great last, but... because of the roster size. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and this is the last one. I think this was in response to my take on uh, the Seahawks Russell Wilson uh, showdown. And this person added me uh, individually. And uh, let's see. Horrible take. People say anything to get a click. Who actually listens to these guys? <laughs> He's talking about me and you. Uh, here's the thing. We don't say anything to get a click. And as we close, I want to say this. Thank you all for writing. You know what the most free thing about doing this show, Michael? I feel like I feel, felt like back when I did my podcast mid, you know, 2014 or whatever. Yeah. I never said, I don't even, I don't even think about who's watching or not watching the show. I don't think about what anybody thinks about this show. I think about having fun with my man. I think about talking to you. I think about listening to you. I think about going back and forth with you, doing the best show that we can, regardless of who's watching or who's not. And I want to take the opportunity to say, inspired by that last comment, who, who listens to these guys, I don't care, but, but somebody is. So anybody who's checking for us, anybody who's looking for us, and I know it ain't always easy to find us, and anybody who's found us and is following us and is taking the time to write these comments, thank you. Thank you for holding us down. We appreciate you. Thank you for the, the people told me long, somebody told me a long time ago. Don't worry about the people that don't f with you. Worry about the people that do. Make the people that like you <laughs> That's love right. you. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you thank so much for all the people who are holding us down in the comment section. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for the praise. Thank you for the criticism. Enjoy your weekend. Appreciate you, Michael yeah. Smith. You made me cry on air. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.